Good morning. Today is Christmas Eve. What a special time. And for us, it's extra special this year. Our son Paul and his wife Krista, along with our two grandkids, Olivia and Cameron, surprised us here at the last minute and were able to make plans and come to Oklahoma City to be with us. So we're going to get to have them here to celebrate with us here on these last few days, Christmas Eve and Christmas. It's truly a blessing for us. But as we're being able to talk about you know, the past, it always leads you to reminiscing when you get together and start thinking back. And we were thinking about a Christmas Eve years ago when Paul was 10 years old. He was doing fine until suddenly on the 22nd of December, he started developing swelling on his lower back. He started feeling lots of pain. And before we knew it, he was having a hard time starting to walk. Well, the next day, Marcia took him to go see the doctor. The doctor examined him, but couldn't find anything really wrong. Well, then he ran tests. The test all came back fine. So we had no idea. But Paul continued to go downhill. Wherever there was an elastic, there was compression on his body, he seemed to be having bruising. And with his body literally being bruised and turning black and blue and the swelling getting greater, he, he was in great pain. You could see it around his ankles, around his wrist, around his ribs. Now, Paul had had the flu just a, a week or two before, but he'd gotten over it. Everything was fine. But now this was coming along. It made no sense, and it was scaring us to death. I mean, we literally were watching our healthy son, this kid who was an incredible athlete, just crumble before our eyes. There were times we found upstairs he wasn't walking, he was crawling down the hall because he was in so much pain. We knew we had to do something. It was Christmas Eve. Marcia felt like we've got to get this boy to the hospital. My mom and dad were here. It was kind of crazy. We were needing to try to help figure out what to eat and who's going to go where. And Marcia just turned to my mom and said, you're going to have to be in charge. You're going to have to figure out meals and what everybody's doing. I know Bob's got to be focused on Christmas Eve. We have all these services. I've got to do something to take care of Paul. Paul insisted, however, on coming to Christmas Eve that night. He had been asked to carry the cross in for the 630 Christmas Eve service. And he was so excited and he wanted to do that. And so we let him go to the service and he carried the cross in, but he could barely walk down the center aisle. As soon as the service was over, Marcia said, we're on the way to the emergency room. I was so agreeing, but it was killing me that I could not go and be there and do something about it. She said, I will take Paul to the emergency room. We had to find something. She got there, and can you imagine the emergency room on Christmas Eve? So few doctors are going to wind up being there. More cases seem to come up. No, they had to sit and wait and wait and wait. They waited all the way until 11 o'clock. I was starting the last service. We had an 11 o'clock worship service then. I was starting the last service when there was a shift change and then a new doctor came on and finally they were able to see Paul. The doctor came in, asked a couple of questions, learned about the flu, looked at him, and he immediately said, well, you have henoch schoenlein purpura syndrome. What? henoch schoenlein purpura syndrome. It always seems to happen in children, and usually males, younger children, after they have some sort of respiratory illness, like the flu. And the body begins to, in a sense, attack itself. It's getting mixed up with what's going on. And so you begin to swell, and then you have these reactions. And if caught properly and just treated, usually kids would be fine if they didn't get it again anytime soon. He said, you know, most doctors will go an entire career and never see this. In his whole career, he had seen it twice. That was it. So this doctor began going and getting other doctors and saying, I want you to come see this kid and, I, and see if you can know what it is. Doctor after doctor came in and would look at Paul and examine him and had no idea what it was. We happened to get the one doctor who had seen the cases and knew what it was, and immediately with a look could say, he knocks your line purpose syndrome. That's what you have, young man. 
wow, had we gotten in to see the doctor before 11 o'clock and the shift change, we probably would have come home without a diagnosis still. But because it was so delayed, and this was the doctor who came on, we were blessed. Some people would say, you sure did get lucky. We don't think it was luck at all. We call it a grace moment. Good theologians would wind up saying, it was prevenient grace. God going before, preparing the way for you. I believe it was prevenient grace. It was a grace moment. Every Sunday we've been singing the song, O Little Town of Bethlehem. I believe it's what Philip Brooks understood when he wrote the line, While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wondering love. We felt that you were watching over us in wonderful love to experience the miracle on Christmas Eve. I hope this Christmas Eve you experience that watch of wondering love, that you feel close to that exciting presence of God in your life as we celebrate the birth of a baby. May you have a wonderful Christmas Eve. May you have a wonderful Christmas Day. May God bless you. Merry Christmas.